Hi, my name is Manus Momberg and I am a Principal Solutions Architect with AWS. And I'm joined here with Jay Juris to talk to us about continuous integration and continuous delivery as a part of our modernization video series. If you haven't seen the videos that we talk about containerization and orchestration, please follow the links below and go and look at all of the videos where we talk about how to build an application into a container and how to distribute it. So this video is a part of our modernization video series and hopefully you've watched the videos before this one. If you haven't, please follow the links below to go and look at how we containerize the JPEG store application and how we orchestrated that using our Amazon container technologies. In this module, we're going to show you how to automate that process and give you more control without any blockers in that environment. So Jay, how can we do this? So one of the things we're gonna cover in this module is how to use some of our AWS services to enable your developers to provide uh, pipelines that are gonna allow them to rapidly deploy their applications in an automated fashion. So in order to do that, we're gonna, again, use CloudFormation, and we're going to provision uh, AWS code commit, AWS code pipeline, and AWS code build as well. Now, if you recall from previous modules, we had exercises that were very uh, focused on developers manually uh, doing the build process and then doing the deployments for these. So we're going to extend that functionality a little bit more by providing these automated tools. So we're going to get started. So in our Cloud9 uh, environment, we're going to go ahead and launch our CloudFormation stack. And as in previous modules, we're going to, again, monitor the status of that CloudFormation stack until it's been complete. So while we wait for that to deploy our pipeline, can you explain to us what phases this pipeline will go through? I'm glad you asked. So this pipeline is going to consist of three basic stages. We're going to have a source, we're going to have a build, and then we're going to have a deploy stage. When we started these exercises, we began with a GitHub repository that you initially cloned and you obtained some of the artifacts that we're going to use for these exercises. Now that we have our code commit repository created, we're going to take the artifacts that we've locally cloned and we're going to push those to that code commit repository. So Jay, why are we using code commit and what is the differences between something like github.com and AWS code commit? So AWS code commit seamlessly integrates with other code star services like code pipeline and code deploy and code build. So we're using code commit to easily trigger any changes that our developers are doing to their source code and then trigger that pipeline so that the build automation process takes place and the deployment process takes place as well. Right, so you can securely manage your code repositories through our integration with IAM as well. So you can have this native experience inside of Git itself. Absolutely, code commit provides private repositories that you can use and secure your artifacts within your organization. So we're gonna do a couple of steps to configure your environment to work with code commit. The first of which is we're going to pass the code commit clone URL into an environment variable in our Cloud9 instance. I'm gonna go ahead and CD to the root of our cloned repository. And now I'm going to configure my environment with the uh, credentials. And that's going to allow me to clone um, a code commit repository uh, using HTTPS. So now that our code commit environment is set up, we're going to go ahead and add the remote origin for our code commit repository. And now I'm going to use git push to force the local changes to be committed to my repository. Okay, so now we have our original public repository out of github.com and we've pushed it to a secure, private and managed repository that we own. Now can we build out of that and will that automatically trigger our code pipeline? 
Yes, it will. So the initial repository has already been created. So code pipeline by default is going to monitor any changes in code commit. And once it detects those changes, the pipeline is triggered. So we're providing you with a build spec YAML file. The build spec YAML file contains the definitions that code build will use to provision a Docker image that automates the process that the developers were performing in previous modules. Cool, so the build spec that YAML is something that the developers will own and they can then script out and build their application in the way that they want it to be built, push it to the repository that they want to use and then deploy it using a definition in ECS or Kubernetes the way that they want to. So they fully own that whole environment and the way that it goes from the development experience right up into production. Yes, let me show you how it looks in our environment. I'm gonna go ahead and from the AWS console, go to the code pipeline console. And from there, I can see the three stages that I defined earlier, my source, my build, and my deploy stage. So let's take a look at the process. So we have our code pipeline, and we see that a recent code commit has triggered our, so our source stage. Now, subsequently, our build stage is gonna be engaged once that's completed. Let's take a closer look at that build spec YAML file to see what's going on in that. So during our build stage, we're consuming the build spec YAML file to provision a Docker container that's going to run through the same steps that the developers would have manually done. So if we take a closer look at that build spec YAML file, we see that we have three different phases. There's a pre-build phase, a build phase, and then a post-build phase. And what we're doing in each of those phases is we're authenticating to Amazon ECR. We're also building our container image using other products like Artifactory that we included in previous examples. We're tagging those images and then we're pushing the newly updated image back to ECR. And then at the end, we're creating an image definitions.json file that's gonna be consumed by our last stage, the deployment phase. So if we take a look at our pipeline and we go into the AWS console and go to our code build console, we see the various stages being completed as a result of this pipeline having been triggered, including build logs that are going to show in detail every step that's being done as part of that build process. So we can use these logs as things like audit tracking and audit logging for our pipeline as well? Absolutely. These logs allow you to use other services like CloudWatch to be able to log some of these events and then be able to obtain them later on. So once we have that image definition digestion, the pipeline on our behalf would pass that definition into ECS and update our service that we deployed earlier. Absolutely. So during the deploy stage, the image definitions.json is consumed. You'll have a new Docker image from ECR that's going to contain your latest changes and it will update the task definitions in Fargate to provision new containers containing your new code. Great, thank you very much, Jay. So in this module, we spoke about automation. And we hope by this time you understand that automation is not just about making some of your tasks easier, but it is a core tenant for your business in order to make it more secure and get your developers into a position where they can iterate faster, add features to their applications, and get to their customers faster. It helps them do that failure without being afraid of failure that we spoke about in previous videos. So please, Take a look at the links below this video to find our video on security and how you can learn all about implementing those security best practices in this automation pipeline.